political parties to run their primaries. As the dates draw near, political parties are mobilizing and set on the stage for the governorship primary election where the best candidate to represent each party in the November 16 governorship election will emerge. Ife Oluwa Omosule reports that stakeholders anticipate a transparent electoral process. Preparations for party primaries in Ondo State include declaration of intentions, online and offline publicity, consultations and various strategic political meetings. Already, some parties have faced dates for their primaries in order to meet the Independent National Electoral Commission deadline, while others are still awaiting further directives from the leadership of their parties. The National Secretariat has already told us that uh, on the 25th of April, this year it will hold now the mode is also prescribed the mode is um, indirect indirect in the sense that each of the wards will elect three ad hoc delegates in a direct manner then each local government will also elect what they call national delegate most of the aspirants who have been showing their intent to contest have been coming to us the people's democratic party pdp has about eight aspirants running the All Progressives Congress APC has over 15, while the Social Democratic Party SDP says so far no aspirant has declared intention. I won't be confident enough to tell you that we will be holding our uh, primary very soon because so far no candidate has shown up. Party faithful say they are looking forward to a transparent electoral process where the best candidates for their parties will emerge. Well, PDP is um, one party that actually opposes the tenets of democracy, which are prince justice, fairness and transparency. So we believe that the party will not do anything less than that which is known for. In the party, I want all members of the party to take it easy with each other. There should be no violence. It is the belief of stakeholders that existing loopholes will be addressed and internal party crisis resolved before the election date. In Akure, Fairlu Amoshili, NC News. All right, the stage is set for primaries to run in Ondo um, State. And we join our correspondent, Ife Olua, live now, who joins us to give us update on the forthcoming um, primaries that will happen in the state. Ife Olua, good to have you join us on the news. Um, please tell us, what is the preparation like um, going forward, especially in expectation for the primaries scheduled? Ruth, ahead of the governorship uh, primaries in the states, um, candidates have started picking up their interest forms to indicate that they, are, they will be contesting in the primaries. And as well, um, they, 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 the parties have fixed dates for the primaries. And um, there is also consultation all ongoing, um, even beyond Akure Metropolis. They've taken their consultations to the grassroots in order to actually ensure that they have the support of all the party members in all wards. And then talking logistics and security, um, while I spoke with um, some of the spokespersons of the political parties, they noted that there are arrangements made to ensure that there are no breakdown of law and order during the election. And then talking logistics, they also, made, they, they also assured us that they have made preparations for that in order to ensure that personnel and even the materials that will be needed for the elections are transported to the election venue. Okay, Feluwa, when we're looking at primaries like this, of course, you know fairness and transparency comes to mind. Um, what critical steps are political parties making to ensure that this come to play, talking about fairness and transparency at the primaries. The members that we spoke with, they actually expressed this confidence in their parties that they have a structure that um, encourage fairness and transparency. And then uh, while we spoke to the um, spokespersons of the parties, they noted that the party will ensure that everything is done um, transparently and then um, there is equal opportunity for all the candidates, regardless of their age, status, or even their background. 
Okay, so what will the monitoring look like? You know, what um, reports are you gathering regarding, um, you know, persons that will be on ground to monitor the integrity of the process um, when that happens? Ali, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission does not conduct primary elections, so they expect that the parties will conduct their primaries, and um, they are they are they are, they, are, they are expected to be on ground to ensure that um, the parties comply with electoral laws during the elections, and even the media, the media that are known as the that is known as the watchdog of the society, will be around from different media organizations to also give a report of the primary elections. All right. Thank you very much, Ife Oluwa, for that update. And, of course, we'll keep our fingers crossed going forward to the 6th to 27th when the primaries of every political party will begin at this state. Thank you for that information. You're welcome. Every year, the Earth produces billions of tons of natural resources. Well, scientists say at some point in not too distant future, it will run out. For this reason, countries must think about what they throw away, seeing waste as resources and opportunities and not as nuisance. Charles Alpha reports that this has been echoed as the world marks the 2024 Global Recycling Day with focus on the need for more recycling. Global Recycling Day is an annual event which aims to raise awareness of the importance of recycling and encourage people to take action to reduce waste and protect the environment. It also brings together individuals, organizations and governments from around the world to promote sustainable practices and highlight the benefits of recycling to protect the planet for future generations. As the earth natural resources deplete at an alarming rate, the risk of exhaustion in the not too distant future is obvious. Therefore, the 2024 Global Recycling Day is putting the spotlight on recycling heroes that is people, places, businesses, and activities that showcase the importance of recycling for an environmentally stable planet and a greener future for all. Reports say recycling saves over 700 million tons in carbon emissions each year with the figure projected to increase to 1 billion tons by 2030. In Nigeria, the Waste Management Society estimates that Nigeria generates about 65 million metric tons of waste yearly. However, only a fragment is collected, managed and recycled. Furthermore, the value of recycling industry runs into billions of naira. And that is why the focus of this day is on ways to reduce waste refuse items and restore the health of the planet while a common unified approach is the way to go to solve the problem reports also say if significant and rapid changes are not made the world would experience continued rising of global temperatures the melting of ice caps continents on fire and rapid deforestation with direct impact on humanity Global Recycling Day was first celebrated on March 18, 2018 by the Global Recycling Foundation and recognized by the United Nations and celebrated across the globe. Charles Alpha, NT News. All right, and to expand that, of course, you know when the items um, designated for disposal are not decomposing or are non-biodegradable, uh, they usually recycled. Well, we had a guest earlier in the studio, an environmentalist, Dr. Michael David, um, to talk about the sustainability of recycling, especially on the sidelines, as, as the world celebrates the Global Recycling Day. Let's see that. Nigeria produces about 30 million tons of waste annually and it is projected that by 2050 it will be over 100 million tons of waste. 
Now the big question is, where does this waste go to? And the answer is, it remains within the environment. And that is why we all should be concerned and we all should actually become waste recyclers. So we don't leave it only to the Babamboras or to the few companies that recycle. That's the scavengers you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the scavengers I'm, talking, I'm referring to. So we, we have the capacity to recycle over 80% of our waste. Because if you look at the waste we produce, majorly some bio-waste, but then mm. there are lots of non-biodegradable waste. And chief among them is plastics, which is everywhere. Mm. Uh, the rains are just around the corner. And in no distant time, you see flooding in most parts of the country. The theme for this year's observance, it's recycling heroes. Let's be recycling heroes. We turn to other issues. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, says the federal government is deliberate in her nursing the potential of Nigerian youths towards the socio-economic development of the nation. He was represented at an event organized by the North Central All Progressives Congress Youth Leaders Forum in Abuja. He explained that youth empowerment is top on the federal government's priority list and expresses the hope that the present administration's policies and programs get towards youth empowerment in the areas of ICT, small and medium enterprises, as well as the student's loan scheme that would soon kick off will bring about the desired economic well-being for the country. He urged the youths to support the present administration in addressing the current socio-economic challenges occasioned by the fuel subsidy removal. Earlier, the chairman, North Central APC Youth Leader Suleiman Abdullahi, on behalf of the group, passed a vote of confidence on the SGF in recognition of his commitment and exemplary leadership for the growth and development of the party within the North Central Zone and Nigeria at large. Ogun State Government has commenced the disbursement of 10,000 Naira cash awards to primary and secondary school students, public schools across the state. The gesture is in fulfillment of the promise made by the Governor Dakbo Abiodun to assist indigent students in the state. Let's hear from Hakim Juma. That was the mood of parents and their children upon receiving the news of the government gesture in schools visited in Ogun Central Senatorial District of the state. Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Professor Abayomi Aribabu, who monitored the exercise, notes that the policy is one of the numerous programs initiated by Governor Dakbo Abiodun to bring succor to residents in the wake of the prevailing ash economy. To meet the parents in the areas of uh, maybe support for their children, maybe to buy some um, buy pyro, pencil, exercise books, giving them the a message again. And then as we sit in the hall, they get the alert. Professor Aribabu disclosed that five exercise books will also be given to about 850,000 pupils in public primary and secondary schools across the state. While promising to judiciously utilize the money, parents and the children expressed appreciation to the governor for the gesture. In fact, when I received the alert, I'm very, very happy. Ogun State Government has commenced the payment of 50,000 naira to indigent students of Ogun State origin in private and public tertiary institutions across the country. In Abeokuta, Hakim Jimo, NTA News. Determined to improve food production and tackle food inflation, the federal government is deepening efforts towards proactive deployment of technology across the agricultural value chains. Now, to this effect, geo referencing and mapping of genuine farmers to weed out thick portfolio farmers by the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security is ongoing. Lydia Samson reports that these. Um, where the takeaways from NTS Good Morning Nigeria, um, where guests spoke on improving food production in the country. Nigeria is enormously endowed with arable land for farming. Unfortunately, the nation still battles low production across various sectors. 
Hopefully, the narrative will change as prioritizing and deepening climate smart agriculture to produce smart farming and farmers across various specific agricultural areas. Just on Good Morning Nigeria say, in line with the renewed hope agenda, is being aggressively pursued. In the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security, right now we are working to create an enabling framework on ease of doing agriculture in Nigeria. That is one of the projects we're going to have this year. We want to see the pain point of Nigerian farmers and all the value chain actors so that at the end of the day, we will be addressing those pain points one after the other. That way we can encourage people who have invested massively in the agricultural sector to make the most out of their investment. 23 provision. So the sustained agenda has very, very key emphasis on agriculture. And we are starting with majorly our, our smallholder farmers because um, agriculture provides more than 43% to uh, contribute more than 43% to the state's GDP. They noted that some subnationals are already keen in the agricultural revolution of the federal government and excelling. The essence and the major thing is to get aware of what you call the say, dynamics of change in temperature change in rainfall pattern, and you synchronize your production to that. The guests are emphatic that with more patience and understanding, the food inflation being experienced now will give way to the trajectory of putting food on Nigerians' table, as government is escalating mechanized farming as well as all year round farming, as depending on rain fed farming is no longer feasible. To further reposition agriculture and food security in the country, a national food security summit will be convened to chart a sustainable way forward. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. We're in time to get some more reports from our Lagos Network Center as we join Michael. Michael? Thank you, Ruth. For democracy to thrive in Nigeria, there must be effective and continuous engagement between the executive and the legislative arm of government. This will ensure the proper execution and implementation of government policies and programs. Governor Babajide Sonwulu stated this at the 18th edition of the executive and legislative party of the Lagos State Government. S.A. Wamaka reports. It was a gathering of principal members of the state executive and legislative arm of government, as well as political elites of the All Progressives Congress, APC, at the 18th Executive and Legislative Parley, teamed engaging all for inclusive governance, hands on for a greater Lagos rising. Governor Babaji Desonolo, while delivering his address, stressed that the synergy between the executive and legislature stands as a pivotal force behind Lagos' monumental achievements. There are global issues, there are national issues, there are state issues, there are community issues. You know, and so each one of those issues, as leaders, as people that the citizens believe in, you know, is, this, is a force on our shoulder and we must be able to rise up. Delivering the keynote address, the former Minister for Works and Housing, Babatunde de Fashala, urged political office holders to manifest the essence of governance, which is delivering the dividends of democracy to the people. If people are facing a cost of living crisis, one of the things that we can do is to increase the quantum of money at their disposal. We can drive sustainable development and foster a more prosperous future for all Lagosians. In the separate remarks, some political stakeholders noted that the executive and legislative parley of the Lagos state government will foster a harmonious relationship between the state's executive and legislative arm of government for the benefit of Lagosians. We as politicians have taken the task of ministry into the need of the people, the welfare of the people. I know uh, it's difficult, but please just be patient. You will soon begin to see signs of development. We will need an adapted, adapted uh, parliamentary system of government suitable for our own situation and circumstance. The 18th edition of the Executive and Legislative Parley of the Lagos State Government is expected to evaluate the scorecard of the Lagos State Government and suggest future steps for Lagos rising. In Lagos, S.A. Owamaka, NC News. 
The rising cases of suicide in Nigeria have continued to dominate public discourse as the trend is having repeated effects on the larger society. More worrisome is its prevalence among the male gender, which is begging for urgent attention by stakeholders. Joe Bukwala takes a look at the causes, risk factors responsible for suicide among this gender. If you are still doubting the effect of drug abuse, here is 26-year-old Ayivi Sunday Alide, a multi-talented young man whose life was almost ruined as his addiction to drugs pushed him to becoming suicidal. Now, Ayivi has decided to pick up the pieces of his life to better himself. I'm tired of the streets, but I can't leave it because I don't have where else to go. I am promising all Nigerians if I get a job, nothing is taking me back. Olami Lekon, a student of mathematics and education, on the other hand, grew up with the belief that boys are not loved and always neglected. This notion forced him to contemplate suicide three consecutive times. The fact that I mean, I get zero support from me, to the extent that no matter what I'm going through, I don't ask people for help. The philosophy that male child or men are independent beings and should man up to undo the challenges of life is not totally true, as most males who are supposedly strong are finding it difficult to cope with societal pressures, especially the current realities. Going by statistics provided by the World Health Organization, the number of suicide rates in Nigeria stands at 17.3 per 100,000 population with the male gender accounting for over 80 percent with a steady rise since 2012 due to a number of factors. You can see a lot of references to I was abandoned, my father left. I mean, so it's like there's no role model or we don't even really train the guys. So a lot of emphasis is placed on the girls. This forum, therefore, is to provide the platform to restore, recharge and reinstate the male gender. We need to be going to slums, also schools to make sure our boys are told not to man up. Those of us that are privileged enough to be able to contribute, no matter how little, to ameliorating the situation. The determination and collaboration of all stakeholders say will translate to making huge impact on the society while changing the notion of making suicide the final option. In Lagos, Joel Bukbola, NT News. Those are the reports from Lagos Nationwide Continues in Port Harcourt. After this break, do stay. Welcome to Port Harcourt. The Central Bank of Nigeria on December 1st, 2023, directed that a post no debit restriction be placed on all bank accounts without BVN from March 2024, urging Nigerians to link their bank accounts. Bank customers in Port Harcourt have expressed concern owing to the slow pace of the process arising from network issues, while the banks have urged bank customers to also make use of the online portal attributed the challenges to last minute rush. Ijamangweke reports. Following the March 2024 deadline for BVN and NIN linkage announced by the Central Bank of Nigeria, indications are that many bank customers may not be able to assess their bank accounts after the projected date, as customers are still struggling to complete the process of the linkage to their bank accounts. Some Port Harcourt residents who spoke with NTA News expressed their frustration following the slow pace of the process rising from network issues. They highlighted other hitches being encountered such as error in names and date of birth amongst others. They said I can't access the money. Then I said my need is answering Pius Roots or baby. Why my BVN is Pius Roots obey? My date of birth did not correspond with my BVN. So I have to go back to uh, court and take an affidavit to correspond my B NIM and my BVN date of birth. Others, however, attribute the challenges to last minute rush by bank customers who were waiting till the deadline, suggesting that they can also make use of the online portal. Have not done their own. They should be given enough time 
to go ahead and do their own. I went to the bank, but the crowd was scary. I had to go back. But later, I got a mail from my bank telling me that I can do it at my convenience, my, wherever I am. I used the code they sent to me to link my name. The Central Bank of Nigeria is urging Nigerians to promptly link their BVN and name to their bank accounts. In Port Harcourt, Ijomu Weke, NTN News. Mental health issues are increasingly becoming significant in the society. However, health experts believe that addressing mental health challenges in Nigeria will require more awareness and understanding of mental health issues. This report by Chile Biroyan takes a critical look at the causes of mental health disorder and how they can be managed. Mental health challenges are fast becoming a leading cause of global health body. Yes. This aspect of public health remains highly neglected in developing countries like Nigeria. When, when mental, mental disorder, disorder is mentioned, mentioned what, what really comes to mind is the picture of an unkept, this, this heavy, shaggy person, person who is unaware of his environment. environment. However, even, even though, though such could be referred to as the extreme case of the health condition, condition this category of people are just a little part of the very mental health disorders known. Regrettably, not many people are aware that depression, anger issues, eating disorders, anxiety, dementia, schizophrenia, bipolar, and substance abuse are mental ill health, and as such, many don't take their mental health as a priority. Mental health on its own refers to the state of a person's um, emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It has to do with how people handle um, the things they experience on a day-to-day -day basis, on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. We have certain challenges that could be external factors like you know sometimes you may think about you know some people go through unemployment the loss of a loved one there are things that you may not be able to control that could actually be a threat or a determinant factor of your mental well-being unfortunately due to limited awareness and cultural misconceptions many individuals suffer in silence often without proper diagnosis or treatment anybody can have a mental health challenge i think that's the thing about it it's not a respecter of gender social class financial status nothing anybody can develop it traditional beliefs and cultural norms often contribute to stigmatization leading to sufferers being ostracized isolated or even subjected to abuse in portacles on NTA news and that does it from Port Harcourt. It's back to Ruth for the rest of the news. Good evening. Thank you, Dibabari. An early morning fire has destroyed motorcycles and bicycles worth millions of naira at the Sokoto Central Market. Some of the traders blamed the fire on a heap of refuse in the market that has not been evacuated for more than three years. Zainab Saidu Abdul Nasser reports. The fire which started in the early hours of Monday damaged the section where motorcycles and bicycles are sold. Although there was no loss of life, motorcycles and bicycles worth millions of naira were destroyed by the fire. Efforts by both federal and state fire service stopped the fire from spreading to other parts of the market. A cross-section of the traders alleged that the fire emanated from a huge heap of refuse in the central market that had not been evacuated for more than three years. The traders argued that they had complained to the market authority about the refuse but to no avail. Sabo the site in the Wuti ma Sharan and Takama the Wuta the Eki de one look at the Rana Ido Nagani Ido and you poke the Ankashu and no water. In his reaction, special advisor to the governor on Sokoto Central Market, Ibrahim Mohammed, however, disagreed with the traders who blamed the fire outbreak on the heap of refuse in the market. He said investigations will reveal the cause of the fire. Because it happens around five AM uh, in the morning, so therefore you can't, you, can't, you can't say precisely this is what caused the, this fire. Officials from National Emergency Management Agency and the Sokoto Emergency Management Agency have visited the scene of the Infano to begin assessment of the damage caused by the fire in Sokoto. Zainab Said Abdel Nasser, NTA News.
The Universal Basic Education Commission, in collaboration with the state's Universal Basic Education Boards, are collaborating on implementing the effective school program for improved educational outputs for basic education in Nigeria. This, they say, is geared towards reinventing the mechanisms for improved processes in universal education. Now, the effective school program seeks to ensure collective actions at both national and state levels towards ensuring that prescribed minimum standards in basic education service delivery are attained and further scaled up for commensurate learning outcomes. And the purpose here is to make sure that those schools that we have are also being upgraded systematically over a period of time to be able now to function uh, as uh, schools that are effective, that can deliver isn't it, you know, at all levels uh, of teaching and learning. So that's what brought the idea of the effective schools program. The Commission says it is committed to improvement of learning conditions and processes to produce basic education graduates with effective life skills capable of competing favorably in the 21st century knowledge economy. For more than a year now, public universities in the country have enjoyed a stable academic calendar. But well, that seems to give way as the Joint Action Committee of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities and Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities and Allied Institutions begin a seven-day strike in the federal and state universities nationwide. At University of Abuja, members shut the university gates, confirming withdrawal of services with placards that displayed some of their demands. One of them is that they should be accorded same considerations given to ASU as they are also employees of government. We went on strike in 2022 was the issue of the renegotiation of the 2009 agreement. That agreement ought to have been renegotiated every three, three years. We want the reconstitution of our governing councils because that has affected our members' promotion and other issues pending. The unions promised to convene a meeting at the end of the seven days warning strike to take major decisions if their demands are not met. A look at other issues. City Boy movement has flagged off the 2024 Ramadan food box distribution exercise to hundreds of students and vulnerable groups at the Federal College of Education, Zuba, and other community around the FCT. The boxes, which contain food items and beverages, are designed to assuage the sufferings of students during the Islamic period for self-denial and spiritual upliftment. The program was to further spread the renewed hope gospel of zero hunger and encourage charity during the month of Ramadan. Our fasting, uh, this will go a long way. This will, you know, renew their hope. The government cannot do it alone. So we need people, we need support groups, we need uh, organizations to come out and support the Nigerian communities. Those are the downtrodden. I want to thank them. They really tried for this because students are finding it very difficult to break fast. The boy movement says it is committed to its impact in the lives of many Nigerians across party lines and religion beyond 2027. The Emir of Lafia, Sidi Baghir Muhammad I, is tasking Muslim Ummah to imbibe the culture of sacrifice, peaceful coexistence, and fervent prayers, which are the hallmarks of the holy month of Ramadan. The Emir handed down this charge at the maiden edition of the NTA Lafia Ramadan Lecture. Ayena J. Auta reports. As Muslim Ummah across the globe observe the holy month of Ramadan, the need for them to eternalize the lessons of the period is said to be key in approaches of life endeavors. 
It is in line with this that NTA Lafia has organized the Ramadan lecture with the presence of Islamic scholars to remind adherents of the religion of these lessons. The Emir of Lafia, who praised the NTA for its role in fostering religious harmony among Nigerians, notes that the Ramadan lecture will go a long way to educate the people. The NTA as a family is living to its bidding, its expectation of bringing awareness as a leader of the media in Nigeria. Activities featured at the event include Quranic recitation and lectures from renowned Islamic scholars. As long as you help your brother, certainly Allah shall help you as well. It's about uh, uniting the people of NTA family and Nigeria in general. Congratulated NTA for organizing this uh, maiden occasion. The general manager NTA Lafia Rama to Salahuddin explained that it is part of the station's corporate social responsibility. This first Ramadan lecture is another way to fulfill our social corporate responsibility aimed at propagating the religion of Islam, especially on issues relating to the do's and don'ts during the Ramadan and even beyond. I want to seize this opportunity to thank our lecturers for the eye-opening lecture. This maiden edition of Ramadan lecture has as its theme the Islamic perspective of relief materials to the less privileged and its impact to the society and Islamic parenting as a panacea for moral rectitude among Muslims and arresting moral decadence. In Lafia, Ayinaji Auta. NTA News. Well, the Ramadan lecture also held in Ilari, where speaker says, in spite of the current economic challenges facing the country, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. If Nigerians extend hands of fellowship and have empathy for one another, as exemplified by Prophet Muhammad Atia from Ahmad Fulani. With the team keeping faith in Allah amid current economic challenges facing the country, the Grand Kadi Kwara State Sharia Court of Appeal, represented by Justice Sharafuddin Abu Kadri, enjoined believers of all faiths to return to God only for solution to any challenge. Whatever situation any Muslim may find himself, he must first look into Al Quran al Karim and prophetic tra tradition. The Ramadan lecture also featured discussions on the ills of social media by Dr. Sambo Sambaki with a charge on parents and guardians to monitor the activities of their children and wards. In their separate remarks, the general manager of the station, Mrs. Toyin Aladi Atomade, and the chairman of the day, Professor Yusuf Olaolu at the SAN, charged Nigerians to be their brother's keeper. The Nigerian Television Authority, as part of its corporate social responsibility, has organized this Ramadan lecture to sensitize our Muslim brothers and sisters on what is expected of them in this challenging time. I, I appreciate what the, you know, the lectures I've been hearing advising people to I mean, uh, help others. The lecture, which is the 13th in the series, had in attendance Islamic clerics, traditional rulers, Islamic societies, and students of various secondary schools, Ahmad, Fulani, Ahmad Fulani there. In an effort to promote women's participation in politics, education and economic activities, the Jagawa State Government, under the Ministry of Women Affairs, has honored prominent indigenous women for their contributions to the state's development. Mohammed Musa Askira reports that their words, rather awards, were given in commemoration of the 2024 International Women's Day. The award ceremony honoring the 50 Jigawa women was an initiative of the Jigawa state government to spotlight the hard-working women, appreciate their contributions to serve as role models for other women in the state and beyond. Hadiza Abdul Wahab, the Jigawa state commissioner for women affairs and social development, stated that the women were selected for their contributions in politics, education, civil service, 
Economic and Community Development. The wife of the Jigawa State Governor Hadiza Uma Namadi highlighted that the event was part of Governor Namadi's commitments to supporting women. Our development partners, congratulations to you to celebrate women's achievements in respect of their nationality, ethnic, ethnicity, language, culture, economic or political affiliation. Notable awardees include former Minister of Education, Professor Rukayat Ahmed Al-Kali, and the wife of the APC National Chairman, Dr. Hafsad Abdullahi Umar Ganduji. The celebrants express happiness and gratitude to the government, stating that their work will motivate them to further contribute to the developments of Jigawa and the country. <laughs> Let's talk agric. The recent declaration of state of emergency on food security by the current administration is receiving reactions from different quarters. But to the Niger state government, it is a challenge that must be tackled headlong. Part of the strategies is the launch of agricultural revolution in Niger state to provide long-term measures to ensure food security. Fatima Usman reports. Niger State is blessed with arable landmass, which makes subsistence and commercial farming possible if adequately harnessed. It is in order to take advantage of the land size of the state that the state government decided to invest in agriculture to stimulate the economy, even as prosperity is brought to the state. Every local government area will cultivate 10,000 hectares of land. To make bold its commitment, the state has been co-opted in the federal government policy on agriculture's pilot scheme, while it has also gone ahead to enter agreements that will cover farm implements and inputs. We really encourage, especially we the women. Let the community be part of the, the, the process. You can harvest two times during dry season farming. You can also harvest two times during, during wet season farming. With the support and commitment of all stakeholders involved in the agricultural revolution, Niger State will be on the global map as an agricultural hub in a few years' time. Imina and Fatima Usman, NTA News. All right, let's join our correspondent Fatima Usman, who will be speaking to us on the agricultural revolution happening in the state. Fatima, please go ahead and fill us in. And at it, influx of people coming into the state to purchase large scale of grains and tubers that was affecting availability and prices too. Thus, the revolution by the state government to turn around things to ensure food sufficiency not only in the state but in the country as a whole. To achieve this, it is set to improve the capacity of the, its teeming farmers through deviating from the local way of farming to the mechanized way of farming. Thus, the, pro, uh, the acquisition of uh, mechanization implements, such as you can see right behind me, we have about 300 tractors and six, uh, 900, uh, sorry, about 700 other farm implements consisting of uh, tillers, harvesters, and what have you. These are to be distributed to the farmers through uh, the Association of Farmers in Nigeria, AFAN, who have already been mobilized towards that. The state government has an arrangement with a multinational company that has uh, pr provided it with uh, this implement. It is supposed to be the off-taker of uh, getting back this uh, money from the farmers through uh, collection of uh, the produce that they get via 60, 40 percent. While the state government takes 60 percent, they are to have 40 percent. The 60 percent is what the state government intends to use to pay back uh, the suppliers of this implement and uh, all that. For this, the state intends to clear 25,000 hectares of land for the farmers. So 10,000 uh, hectares is supposed to be 
uh, cultivated in every local government of the 25 local governments available in the state. Very much, Fatima. Indeed, this is a breakthrough for small holder farmers in the state, and this will definitely boost food security. Thank you very much, Fatima, for that insight. All right, let's take a break. We're back in a moment. Makodi will be our next stop, and Susan is standing by. Joining us in Makudi, the Nigerian Army Corps of Engineers has positioned to prioritize developmental projects as well as capacity building of personnel. Commander Corps of Engineers Major General Philip Eromosele disclosed this at the inauguration ceremony of remodeled Sapa's guest house and other projects at the Nigerian Army School of Military Engineering. Makudi, Blessing Omeche Ibute has details. The Nigerian Army School of Military Engineering, Nasme Makudi, provides quality educational training for military personnel in the area of engineering, which includes the art, science, and practice of designing and building military works. Commander Corps of Engineers, Major General Philip Eromosele, while inaugurating the remodeled Sapa Guest House, says the event is in line with his vision to develop the capacity of the Nigerian Army engineers for robust support to the Nigerian Army in accomplishing assigned missions. This vision was derived from the Chief Army Staff Command philosophy of transforming the Nigerian Army into a well-trained, equipped and highly motivated force towards achieving our cultural responsibilities within the joint environment. He adds that he will redirect his attention to infrastructural and manpower development in NASME to enhance efficiency of the Nigerian Army engineers. Other projects inaugurated by the Commander Corps of Engineers include road network in the NASME barracks, renovated senior non-commissioned officers' quarters, and renovated non-commissioned officers' block. In Makudi, Blessing Omeche Ebute, NTA News. And that does it from Makudi. Nationwide continues with Ruth in Abuja. Thank you, Susan. And this is where we call it a day. Nationwide, it's done. Thank you for your time. I'm Ruth Aguele. Bye.